on my life, Satan tried to get me. Uh, walk in my shoes, devil trying to fit me. Uh, but he don't know I got the power fit me. Nah, he don't know I got the power. Hold my life, Satan tried to get me. Get me. Walk in my shoes, devil trying to fit me. Fit me. But he don't know I got the power fit me. Nah, he don't know I got the power fit me. Nah, power fit me. Uh, Good evening, Shaman H. Map coming at you live and direct. This is the end of the bench media. I am your host. Thank you for tuning in. If you are tuning in on YouTube, Facebook, hit that like thumbs up. It's important. Share, tell a friend, or tell a friend. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, please too. Please do. Moving too fast. Now, as I proceed, what I want you to do is continue to support by going to www.theendofthebench.com, the name of the uh, network, T-H-A-E-N-D-O-F-D-A-B-E-N-C-H, the end of the bench.com. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, as usual, I give my parents peace and blessings. Thank you. Without them, there is no me. That is no end of the bench. I salute my family members, everybody who supports. Again, hit that like, hit that thumbs up, hit that share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's important. Now, uh, I have an interesting topic this evening. Um, it was triggered by the death of former NFL great, former newscasters, former pitch man. He was a lot of things. He wasn't just the dude who was accused of murder. His name was Ornthal James Simpson. Ornthal James Simpson, most, most commonly known as OJ Simpson, acquitted of murder, the murder of Ronald Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson. The reason I started off like that is the fact that he was acquitted. Acquitted means he was not found liable for their death. He was tried in a court of law. And as as the rules of the law, the letter of the law states, if you found guilty or found innocent without a reason, you, you need to just present a reasonable doubt. And what is a reasonable doubt? A reasonable doubt is a person within reason, a clear thinking individual, nothing without bias. If you can look at this and reasonably say, it's a possibility he didn't do this. It's a great possibility. It doesn't have to be a tremendous possibility. It doesn't have to be like a football score, a hundred or you know, a basketball game, a hundred to 99. It could be 199. It could be 100 to 49. Whatever the case may be, he was found not guilty. And it really uh, disappointed me in my community. As you know, I, I, I'm active on Twitter on social media and things of that nature because it's you get a bunch of different people. You get different, different people from all over the world expressing opinions and we communicate. And what was disappointing and what, what made me spark this up is a lot of people from our community convicted OJ when he was found not guilty. You have sportscasters like one Stephen A. Smith. Of course, you have the tr traditional pundits that, that are caping to the dominant society to, the, to white communities all around the world because they want to be accepted and they want to be led in the big house. And they've been led in the big house and that's okay. It's okay. If that's what you feel like you need to do, God bless you, you do that. Salute to you. I'm glad you're able to get that accomplished. I'm glad those people are embracing you and you don't have to worry about the culture or the, re the rest of the people in the community looking at you sideways. Works. But for the rest of the world, we, we look at you, we you know the rest of, well, reasonable people. Reasonable people in the community, I think we need to take a step back. Why do we care? And that sounds that sounds pretty hardcore, and that sounds pretty disregarding to, to the death of two people. But if you are in living in, in uh, metropolitan areas throughout this country, coast to coast, border to border, you probably know someone who, whose life has been taken way too early. And I'm not talking about things like illnesses and things of that nature. You probably know someone or related to someone whose people who who had someone had someone murdered, had someone taken from them, car accidents and things that I mean, you know, reckless drivers, DUIs and things. You know someone who's had that. We 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 watch TV every day. We watch most of us, if we're a certain age, we still watch the news on a regular basis and we see things. We go, oh, that's that was so tragic. So the question I have is this, for my community in particular, black community, people who are descendants of enslaved Africans or enslaved natives, yeah. Why do we care about these two single solitary people? I got two cousins since that, 
Since then, two very close cousins who have been murdered. Two very, and murdered in the streets of Chicago. Just shot down, cold-blooded. One on his way from to his car from a store. Another one stopping a man from accosting a young lady. And a young man killed. Nobody's talking about, rest in peace, my cu my younger cousin, Cardell Williams. And nobody, I mean, Cardell Davidson. Nobody talking about my cousin, Vincent Williams. Nobody cares. And I'm not with me or the Williams family. We're not looking for empathy at all. We're not. We love our we love our departed relatives, and that's just it. And that's just all. I just want to know. Look, I understand when you have a celebrity aspect to this, and it's just this. Ooh, it's this big mystery, and everybody cares. And oh, but why? Because guess what? On the first, your rent was due. In a couple of days, my cell phone bill is due. Uh. Stream yard bill was due today. You know, without the bill being paid, I wouldn't even be on air right now. So why do we care? And why are we so quick to jump on the side of the other people who have told them, you know, the Goldman's, let's be honest, man. These people li live in an affluent neighborhood in Los Angeles, California. They don't care about the people in South Central California. They don't care. So why do we care? Oh man, OJ did it. OJ, we got we got it in movies. You all you have to do is bring up OJ Simpson's name in a in a debate more than likely to start about who killed, who was he innocent, was he guilty? Let's just go over some of let's just go over some of the baseline facts. When you are on trial for your life, convict you a conviction or a proven innocent within reasonable doubt. Let's look at some of these things. See, because by me being a criminal justice major, it was important to me. And the fact that I watched this just about every day. I watch this. Let's just go over some of the facts that most people don't even talk about when you and man, he had to do it. They found blood, but they also found blood with a chemical in it. And the chemical is in vials. And those vials, you know, like when you get your blood drawn. The chemicals in the blood were the same chemicals that were found in vials in which you would draw blood. So that means you gather the blood of this one, put it in a vial, and, and put it in this car to help convict him because you were convinced that they would do it. Let's talk about this. Police officers have been terminated and, and incarcerated for planting that evidence. It is public knowledge. Again, why do we care? Do you understand the type of tyranny that has been wreaked upon the people in your community for the last 400 years? And you worried about two people dead? Two people. In the last three years, it was a young man on Ogden and Albany Avenue here in Chicago, 16 shots by a police officer. A month ago, a young man got shot at 96 times, got hit 40 times here in Chicago. I guarantee you in two weeks, I bet you in 30 years, nobody can talk about those two young men. And because guess what? If had I not brought up Cardell and Vincent, nobody would bring up them. So I'm not just trying to single out, oh man, feel sorry for the black community because we're, we're no, no war with me. I'm talking directly to the black community and why do we care? Let's talk about some more evidence. We found bloody socks in OJ's house. Now, I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who's been shot. Or been wounded severely. Blood is everywhere. Blood is everywhere. According to these officers, they found two socks in his living. They found I saw pictures of the socks on the middle of a uh, on the middle of a rug in his bedroom. So what did they? You didn't see any footprints or look. Again, I've been around somebody who's been shot. This person was in the back seat. I was in the front seat. Blood was everywhere. He wasn't even in the front seat, and blood was all in the front seat of the car. Now. With that being said, this young this young lady had had been decapitated, and this young man had been fought and stabbed twenty eight times. And he had defensive wounds on his knuckles, meaning he put up a fight. But well, back to the socks, no footprints that led up to these socks. Just socks that they said were clearly uh, uh, blood was poured on them versus somebody wearing. Them. Now, most of us, most of us, when we're talking to somebody. And they and they explain and then they lie. The first thing that you say when you're talking to somebody, well, why you lie? If you, if you wouldn't, if you were telling the truth, you wouldn't have to lie. That's what most of us say in the event that we're talking to somebody 
and a falsehood is brought about in the midst of the conversation. You lying because if you weren't lying, you wouldn't have had to tell the truth. So if they were telling the truth and OJ actually did this, why did they have to plant evidence? Again, back to the situation. Ronald Goldman, Nicole Simpson. Do you understand a piece of meat holding on her head to her torso about this thing? That means there was an insane amount of blood around. So what people want me to believe is this. That this man, Arthur James Simpson, went home, put on the tracksuit, went and got a ski mask, went and got some gloves. I'm not even going to mention the fact that the gloves were uh, one X and OJ has two X hands. I'm not going to mention that, even though I did. But this dude went home, put on a, a tracksuit, got ready to murder somebody, went and got a knife. And went on, went and put on his five hundred dollar Bruno Macklin dress shoes. He put on those sneakers, cause just in case he has to run, cause he got this tracksuit on to be able to get away swiftly. But I've never known anybody say, you know what? Let me go put on these Bruno Macklin Italian shoes that are gonna be making very difficult for me to run away from the situation. Never mind the fact that there were size nine shoes, and he wears a size twelve. We're not gonna talk about that. Never mind this a forty nine year old man fighting a black belt in karate or a person who was in the midst of learning self-defense, who put up a defense fight, and he had no scratches all over him. No no, no facial bruises, no anything, no, nothing. He had a cut in the palm of his hand, like right here. Well, according to him, he did it in Chicago. He was in Chicago. And, they, and Mark Binger, he killed two people, went home, crossed town, got in his car, took a shower, took off all these bloody gloves. No blood found inside of his house. No blood found in his drain. But we... As the black community, we will pile on insanely. This ain't really about OJ. This is about my disappointment with my people. We're doing the same thing that this one dude by the name of Sean Puff Daddy Combs, P. Diddy, or whatever, Brother Love, whatever he's calling himself this week. It's a radio personality here in Chicago. His name is Crazy Howard McGee. Crazy Howard McGee was, at one point was the most popular radio personality in Chicago. You know why he at one time he was the most popular? Because he socked his girlfriend in the eye and got fired. And he brought it back. Crazy how McGee was, was ranting the day about why can't we hear from Puffy? Why can't we hear from Puffy? The same reason I don't hear you on the on the air talking about that time you socked that woman in the eye. Why must we put on these capes and, and cater to the dominant society? That's why this show is on air. That's why I'm on air today. Look, folks. Our people have been kicked in the behind on a, uh, at an alarming rate for 400 years on this continent. They got you believing that they bought 15 to 20 million people across the ocean and boats that were barely strong enough to hold 300 people. That don't even make sense. Do you know how long it would take to bring 15 million people on boats at 300 at a time? Just think about it. 300 at a time, 15 million. That would take, they still be bringing brothers and sisters over here. This lets you know that people were already over here and they were captured and enslaved, but they don't even tell you that. But see, these are the same people we're catering to. These are the people we, we want to embrace and show that we're upstanding citizens. That's those are the same people. But guess what? These same people that tell us to get over it. How many of y'all know about this place? I know my man Ray Kev. I know my man Ray Kev know about this. It's called Cancer Alley. It's an 86 mile stretch of land with cancerous materials put into in these plants being filtered above above these communities from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to New Orleans, Louisiana. How many of y'all know about that? But well, we worried about OJ. We worried about OJ. Now, how many people? Who listen to me, if you listen for your first time, how many people tuned in that knows that the people in Louisiana had an opportunity to remove slavery from their constitution that nobody voted for, no black people voted for? How many of y'all know that it's, there's, there's only 4 million people in the state of Louisiana, 900,000 elect uh, uh, registered voters in the, in the state of Louisiana are black, and they didn't vote against that? Why is that important? Why is that important? Because this is why it's important. The largest penitentiary in the United States of America is called Angola Penitentiary. Largest penitentiary. Guess what they're going to be doing in a few weeks? In a few, uh, guess what they're preparing to do right now? They're cultivating cotton. 
Guess who's picking that cotton? Prisoners. Guess what that's called? Slavery. Oh, man, if they didn't break the law, they wouldn't be in those situations. See, that's the very mentality that people in power want you to have. They want you to see what's wrong with you. See, again, as I stated last week, if I start sneezing and I start coughing and I get a fever and, and, and all of those things, those are symptoms of, an, of a virus. You don't treat the cough. You don't treat the fever. You don't treat the uh, the sneezing. You treat the vi you uh, you eradicate the vi uh, the, the virus. We don't. Why are we sitting up trying to show people? See, we're, we're upstanding citizens as well. No, no. I hate to sound vicious. I hate to sound disregarded, but I just don't care about if OJ Simpson did it or not. Because guess what? That was twenty six years ago. That was 26 years ago. Thank you. That is 26 years ago. Two people murdered by elected, murdered by someone or some people. 26 years ago, we still talking about. You got people saying good riddance. You got a guy by the name of Bruce Jenner. No, I'm not calling him Caitlyn. My mother was a woman. My sister is a woman. My significant other, my nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, they're women. I have no problem with people identifying, but Hey man, if you identify as this and you and that's that's cool, but I'm not. He's not a woman because he still has his testicles. He still has his penis. So no, you're not that. And women across the country should be upset with everything. Everything about ESPN, they made him woman of the year. You've been a woman for 20, 20, 18, 20, 28, 38, 50, 90 years, and this clown shows up not even a year and becomes woman of the year. But this bozo. Right on Twitter, after OJ died, after OJ Simpson died, good riddance. Never mind that he just killed somebody via vehicular homicide and paid 700000 from what I understand, to get out of that jam. But it's good riddance to this guy. See, it's all about equality and brotherhood until you get hurt. And then when we get hurt, they tell us, oh, H rap, yeah, you and your people. Y'all need to get over it, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. Nah, man. See, that was a long time ago. Well, you know what? Uh, my daughter has been created inside of her mother, birthed through her mother, and had 26 birthdays since that happened. My son has had 27 birthdays since that happened. Safe to say my children are adults, so get over it. It's not like these two people who were murdered were activists who were cleaning up the environment. One of them was a waiter, which is no ain't nothing wrong with being a waiter. And one of them was a lady who, who got married to an ex-football player and was coached by her father into staying in that relationship so he could continue to funnel money into his pockets. Let's just talk about the real. So I'm sorry if I'm not about to cry river and, and because this young lady got into a situation and she ended up dead. This young man got into a situation, ended up dead. And again, everybody who watched this is people watching on Twitter, is people watching on Isaac Hayes fan base, is people watching on my website, it's people watching on Facebook, and it's people watching on YouTube. And everybody who will ever see this. More than like this, I would argue about 95% of the people that watch this had somebody who were who were uh changed, who were unalived. That's the new thing. It ain't murdered anymore. Unalived. So I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. I'm a parent. I understand. I will be pissed off too. Mr. Goldman, I will be pissed off too. But guess what? Would nobody care? And we put this on. Oh man, OJ did it. We got the movies. Don't nobody know who did. It's three people that know who, if OJ did it or not. All of them did. The two victims and OJ. Period. Why are we? Why are we so quick to condemn people? You got people. Oh, Puff Daddy did it. He need to go to jail. See, I've been hearing about this for twenty years. Did he touch you? Why you care? And look, I'm not for him in traffic. I had a woman on Brenda Miles, one of the best people I know. She was on the show fighting against. 
uh, she, she's an advocate against human trafficking. If my man is doing these things, then he needs to be incarcerated. He needs to pay for his sins. That's just the way it works, y'all. If you, if hey, either God gonna catch up with you, or or, or you gonna you gonna catch it's God gonna catch up with you, or the world gonna catch up with you. At some point, you are gonna pay for what you've done. But at the end of the day, it ain't for us to care about because these people not caring about us. Nobody. You got dudes. You got. They didn't trick us into hating these people who migrated from other countries. That's, again, they, they migrating here and they taking money. But what's forcing them here? It, uh, uh, the United States federal government went into their countries, uh, uprooted it, put the rulers in that they wanted in, and these dudes became dictators and run, and then they let the drug cartels and other things take over and they run and they run. So again, it's them coming here the problem, or it's the CIA, FBI, and the United States federal government, people like Oliver North. And, and, and George H. You know, the, the R&B era. R&B, not music. Reagan and Bush. That's why those people here. Because those people let people like, uh, well, I can't think his name right now. I think uh, 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 Noriega. They let people like Norie, Manuel Noriega uproot the entire situation down there. And then, it, it, and now the chick is coming home to roost. But you do not start hating people for being treated the way you've been treated. It's called empathy, folks. See, now, we want to look at the mindless. What y'all doing here? Do y'all tripping? They, they take it from us. But and the way you're looking at them, look to your left. There's a group of people looking at you the same way, black people. Same way. These N-words here. See, we, they need to go back to where they come from. And you actually got the nerve to say this. See, see, they ain't doing this for us. Uh, did you ask them to do it for you? See, there's two ways to look at it. The ignorant, hate feel vitriolic way that you're doing it. And another way to do it is this. Mm. Oh, so y'all got money for them? Oh, cool. Where's mine? And see, this is when I hand out that number for that app called Five Calls app. That's when you need to be downloading it. You don't need to be hating at them. You don't need to be worried. And just like you don't need to be worried about some dead white woman, a dead white man from 26 years ago. Look, man. I ain't no angry. I'm not angry. I, don't, I just don't care. I work by my great grandchildren right now. I work by my great grandchildren. People who I care about their grandchildren. They got children. They got nieces. They got nephews. They got neighbors. They got homegirls. They got homeboys, cousins, aunts, and uncles and grandparents. We worry about them. We don't have time to be worried about two dead white people. We just don't. Y'all can y'all, oh man, see, but he need to go to jail for that. Why? Why? Why, why the dude who ain't who killed somebody on the west side, south side, or the middle north side of Chicago? Guess what? Saturday morning, riding with the homie. Help going to help out the home, right? Driving down my old block. It's four bullet holes in somebody's car. We thought it was another friend of ours. Four bullet holes in the car. And guess what? You see yellow tape when it's a shooting. When it's a red tape, that means it's a murder. Y'all didn't even know about it. Guess what? That's somebody, somebody's niece, nephew, cousin, uncle, father, mother, or brother. But we're not talking about that. We need to focus. See, these things are distractions. These things come about in election years for reasons. Because they are going to take your mind off what you need to be talking about. You got a clown running for president, and you got a bunch of black folks. I almost said that other word. You got a bunch of black folk. Listen to how they trick us. Two months ago, Charlemagne the Clown is on TV talking about Joe Biden's placating the black people bringing fried chicken to their house. If you bring some fried chicken to my house, I'm going to eat it, Jack, because I love chicken. I don't care about what nobody think about me for eating. I eat, I eat watermelon, too. But everybody was up in arms, and Joe Biden went to these people's house. Yeah, he was trying to curry favor. That's what politicians do. He showed up at their house with fried chicken. Oh, man, how he going to do that? Last week, Bozo the Clown shows up at a Chick-fil-A, and you got a room full of black folks. Hey, we love you, Donald Trump. What, what was that? A chicken joint. Chick-fil-A is a chicken joint. And nobody's upset. You got a dude who said he stabbed on television he said, off the top of my head, I got two things that he said. I can shoot somebody, three things. I can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, and they're still going to be at me. 
I I'm going to be a Republican because they're stupid. And the third and most important thing, he don't like black people. Oh, man. Well, he said that a long time ago. You know what? David Duke said he wanted to claim no more, too, right? Y'all voting for him? See, look, man. Stop. The banana is always in the tailpipe. Stop it. Oh, man. You can't be like that, rap. See, now, nah, See, because y'all, I'm going to clear up one more thing. This is the last time I'm going to ever clear this up. I don't have a problem with white people. I have the problem of the white community construct. Because some of the best people I've ever met in my life are white people. But you know what? They don't identify as white. They identify as German Catholic, Irish this, French that, Polish this. They don't identify as white. Because white is a social construct. I don't have a problem with European people. I have a problem with white supremacists. You should too. Because white supremacists and white nationalists, they don't hate work. They don't like working class white folks. So for all you goofballs who anytime I stick up for somebody black, y'all y'all come to me with, what if it was white? I don't like oppression. I don't like denigration. I don't like segregation. I don't like disrespect of human life. But just like you, black folks are my family. So of course I'm going to speak up for my family first and then humanity comes right after that. I don't go support the denigration of white folks, because guess what? Poor white folks and poor black folks, we're in the same boat. And the rich folks, they kicking us square in our behinds. But as the saying goes, when black folks, when white America get a flu, white black folks get pneumonia. So I need to focus on my people. I will never address that again. Back to what I was saying. We must stop falling for the banana in the tailpipe. Folks, I don't care if oh, rest in peace, Ornithal James Simpson, Simpson, respect to Arnell, Justin, Portia, because her name is not Sydney anymore, so y'all didn't even know that. Her name is no longer Sydney, her name is Portia. Uh, and she changed the name because all the vitriolic inf information is pushed out there about her and her family and, all, and the rest of the Simpson clan. It's dope, you know, the dude was an entertainer. That's something else. I don't care about no rapper, no actor, no musician, no any anybody once the TV go off. You can do whatever. If you ain't hurting women and children and elderly people, I don't care what you do. And you shouldn't either, man. Why are we caring about these things, man? We got getting screwed over women y'all don't want to get women health plans y'all don't want to get women time off after having babies y'all don't want to get women paid but we ain't talking about that we talking about oj men they don't want to get men jobs y'all don't want to pay brothers y'all want to discriminate y'all want to put people in a box keisha knight polo has a program uh i can't think of it right now i think of it shortly Keisha Knight, Port, I can't think of it, whatever. She has a program out of Atlanta. It's for black venture capitalists. If you're a black woman with a business, Keisha Knight Poem, the young lady who used to play Rudy on the Cosby show, her and a bunch of women in Atlanta, if they understand that venture capitalists or angel investors, meaning people who just give money to people to start businesses, only 1% go to black women. So her and a bunch of poor black women got together and said, if you got something going on, we'll help you. You got clowns, these white nationalists, these bigoted and racist or an oppressive white men got together and some stooge coons that roll with them got together and, and fought them tooth and nail so they can't give money to black women who want to start businesses. Really? And y'all worried about the juice? Are uh, y'all freaking serious, man. Are you serious? Are you serious? You have to be kidding. You don't want to get people dead. They fighting against unions. I mean, I'm a Trump supporter. Uh, you're in a union? Yeah, where you work at? I'm, you're not an idol work, an auto work. So you're a union guy, and he's part of the union busting crew. But y'all not paying attention to this. He gave me a stimulus check. 
what's it, $10 million? Well, he ain't give you nothing. First of all, the president does not hand out stimulus checks. He signs them. Just like the CEO of a company don't know what's going on in the factory. The United States Senate and the House of Representatives, they approve the stimulus checks that went to you. People like Nancy Pelosi and, 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 and Chuck Schumer and those guys, they approve that stuff. Stop being ignorant to how your government works. See, I don't watch the news because it's depressing. You know what's depressing? Oppression, slavery, disrespect, segregation, inability to educate your children. That's depressing. Underfunded institutions of higher learning, underfunded institutions of academia across the board, inability to get com comparable compensation for your pay, I mean, for your work. That's depressing. And that's what they talk about on the news every night. They show you if it lead, if it bleeds, it leads. So that's to deter the people who work in the stress out there. Because the last thing I want to hear is somebody die. And then in the middle, they give you, and this is what we're gonna screw you. Then they can put the sports at the end so the men a smile. Let's stop falling for it. I need you to start looking at the financial times. I need you to start watching C-SPAN. I need you to start tuning in here and bringing a friend to tune in too. And it's not for my edification. It's not for the glorifying HRIB. It's because we need to stop. Look at the reels that I put up every day. Y'all put up the funny OJ reel yesterday because it was hilarious. It was what it was. But at the same time, y'all, we have to stop paying attention to these people putting this KY on their privacy and putting it on your butthole because you are getting screwed. You are getting screwed. White folks, let me talk to you for a second. Do you really want to? Oh, man, see, this was a, uh, this was injustice. The justice system failed you once. Hey, anybody go to jail for uh, our ancestor, uh, Meg Evans, being murdered? No. Then we find out in the uh, documentary, Who Killed Malcolm X? Two of the dudes who killed him in 1972, Thomas Hager, he admitted to two of the dudes that's in the penitentiary wasn't even with him. He said he admitted it that night. So you mean to tell me it was two dudes who've been ostracized by that family? He had the dude on there. He was ostracized by his family because he is identified as a dude who killed Malcolm X. He in prison for killing Malcolm X. Do you understand the type of tyranny and, and type of vitriol that he was facing in the penitentiary for killing a black hero? Guess what? They found out those two dudes weren't even the guys. One of the guys was walking around Jersey up until about a couple of years ago. He croaked. He had a heart attack and died. Training people on how to box. And Cory Booker's commercial. Cory Booker didn't know he was a dude who killed Malcolm X, but he was in his commercial nonetheless. It was like, yeah, I know dude. But we don't know that's the mayor of, of Jersey. He's uh, thinking a representative now, but he was the mayor of Jersey at one point. Let's understand, man. This is what's been going on in this country. Y'all want to talk about these two white people? Not a problem. Okay, Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman were murdered. Not a problem. Africa Town, Alabama. Toxic waste has been dumped in it for like 30 years now. People down in the cancer left and right. All the land that has been, that have people have been stolen from. Let's talk about Wilmington, North Carolina, when the Klan rolled out after black people in 1867, when black people took over the government in Wilmington, North Carolina, and the Klan rolled down and killed black people. They said, if y'all don't get out of town, we will choke the river with your bodies. Let's talk about 1910, the Red Summer, when all over this country, over 57 towns were set on fire and killed. Let's talk about Let's talk about uh, Allentown, Alabama. Let's talk about Carson, Mississippi. Let's talk about the most haunted town in the United States of America. That's the that's the the, the, the thing. It's in Georgia. That it, guess what it is? It's a lake now. That's what what that lake used to be. It used to be a black town. Let's talk about around Forney, Texas, right outside of Dallas. When you ride over it, I'm looking at the GPS and I'm seeing street names as we ride over water. There used to be a black town. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that town that's in it, right just above Los Angeles that those black people just got the land back and they sold it back. Let's talk about that. 
Let's talk about all these towns and all these cities and all these places throughout the United States of America that black people have died for no reason at all besides being productive human beings in this damn country. And y'all want to talk to me about Orthol James Simpson allegedly killing somebody? And we have it. We put it in movies. We put it in TV shows. We in arguments. We doing all this nonsense. And we ain't talk about that. Let's talk about Let's not even talk about it. Let's talk about 40% of the United States of America water looks like Flint, Michigan. Let's talk about what well, my man DJ Mad Knox, he in the chat room right now, that his his state is having a water crisis right now. Y'all don't even know that. Y'all don't even know that. Let's talk about the Tuskegee experiment when you get a lot of black men who they didn't, they didn't contrary to popular belief, they were not given syphilis. That what they did was they were allowed to suffer with syphilis. So if you got syphilis, if you got a, if you got a sexually transmitted disease, they let you see it. Now, we're gonna see what happened to them. Let's talk about all the black women. Let's talk about the one time racism worked about for black people in this in this damn country. When because they don't want to give black men and women pain relief because of court, oh, we, we magical, we're superheroes, we're the X Men, but we can take pain better than most because they inflicted so much pain on us for the last 400 years. So they know we can take some pain, but that don't mean you just keep beating on me. And they didn't give a, they, they, they prescribe my aunt, my two of my aunts that I take care of dearly. I, I, I look out for them every chance I can get. They get them tired and all, but they gave everybody else. The mother painkillers and now it's an opioid crisis. Let's talk about all those black men that got into. Let's talk about the 1980s, the 1980s, the R and B era. And again, I ain't talking about no switch. I ain't talking about no uh, 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 Luther Vandross. I'm talking about the Reagan and Bush era. Ronald Wilson Reagan defund the schools. Ronald Wilson Reagan remove vocation from schools. Ronald Wilson George W. Bush sits on TV with a big. He low a crack cocaine. We just found this guy right outside of the uh, White House and we bought this crack from him. Yeah, is that the same crack that you helped put on the streets of Los Angeles? People like Rick Ross, people like Phoenix the Cat. No, no, no disrespect to those guys. They, they, they just, hey, you know what? When you put in a horrible situation, don't ask me to make sound decisions in horrible survival situations. I'm sorry. I don't have the, 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 the intestinal fortitude to not to think 30 years in, in the future and say, what is going to happen as I'm selling this crack? Or do I look at my wife? Do I look at my son, daughter, niece, nephew, cousin, brother, and homie starving and can't find a job and the training has been removed from our communities? Oh, no, we ain't going to talk about that. So, no, we not, I'm not trying to hear that, man. I'm not trying to hear it. Y'all have wreaked, y'all have wrecked in our community. Y'all done put situation oh but well, we don't know why this crack is here yeah but see i'm old enough to remember a program that used to come on every friday night on abc news on abc after 10 p.m it was called 2020 it was a news program i would watch 2020 and i remember there's a new social drug hugh downs remember this hugh downs it's a new social drug it's called crack and they had people on wall street smoking crack I got a friend, I'm not going to say her name, but she told me this in confidence. She used to be a woman of the street. She went with a prominent street guy to New York City and they introduced crack cocaine and said, this is what we're going to do. This is what this woman told me. Send her book. Send her book. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want, maybe she don't want her name attached to this. You get a book. I bring her back on and you get a book. Watch, go through my old shows and you'll see her name. Friend of mine. Yeah, I'm going to have to say a name, but it's in there. It's in a book. Said they, they put it out there, man. They put it out there. When you watch TV shows like Snowfall, and you see people like Free Ray Rick Ross complaining that they stole his life, I don't know. Yeah, of course, it's driving the tides, and they talk about flying them all over here and all over there. But look, all I want to know is this. How does a dude who is, is openly stating that he is a functioning illiterate, how does he learn how to cook up a formula to make cocaine into a rock form? So you go from not graduating from high school, flunking out of high school to being a chemist. Folks, we have to stop with this. You're talking about hundreds of years of denigration, a couple hundred years of segregation, the Ku Klux Klan, the, the Proud Boys, 
discrimination. Do you understand 100 years ago? I'm not, I'm not giving this dude no credit. Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, no, no, this Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Theodore Roosevelt is uncle, uncle, daddy, some I don't know. Came up with a plan for the health care. They voted it down because they said they didn't want black folks to get it. The New Deal that gave people, that gave people the ability to get Social Security, land, and things of that nature, they excluded black people. See, this is why you don't hear when you talk about history. This is why they keep, and that's why you promote things like, forget the 90s, we threw with them. Because if you remove the 90s, you J.A., you don't get the inspiration to do what you're doing now, J.A. Just you can't remove history without without things like when people say, man, do you have any regrets? Would you change anything? If you change something, things, if I change the mistakes that I made, I'm not gonna meet the people that I met. Some of the people in my I've met are paramount to my success today. See, you, every everything is beneficial. Everything is beneficial. Don't let somebody tell you, oh man. You should, if I can go back and change, if I can go back and change one thing, I wouldn't change nothing. Hey, man, I could potentially, hey, some things that I made, I could, I made the wrong, the, the quote unquote wrong decision, and I could have been a millionaire, but I'm not, and I'm still alive. So, oh well. But you ever notice about history? You never hear about, you hear about black people in the 50s, you hear about black people, and you live in 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. You don't hear about the 40s, the 50s on back, the 30s to the 50s. You know why? Because black people own their own dry cleaners. Black people getting their own clothes made. Black people own their own department stores, grocery stores. And they, they, they had lawyers. You had people aspiring to be the next Theragood Marshall, A. Philip Randolph, and things of that nature. The Pullman Porters. You, you had black people buying land like 40 going north because we were about to break free of the chains. And then you're going to start talking about the 60s. And then we will try, we should overcome. Now nah, we were overcoming. The more we integrate, the weaker we get. To quote the great Malcolm X, the more, the more cream you put in coffee, the weaker it gets. And that's how it is for community. When I go to Chinatown here in Chicago, Illinois, guess what? That that uh, the menu ain't in English. So if you don't know what you want, you're gonna starve in there. And guess what? The people who are in there, the, 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 the Asian people who go in there. They go in there, they order their food, they don't have no problem, they leave. You got people that's busy. Well, we can't survive off our own, uh, just off us. You a lie. You a lie. Because when I go up on, on the north side, it's a little Vietnam up there. It's a it, it's a, it's a Muslim community up there. I live just north of uh, 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 Little Mexico. Puerto Rican town is up here. The Ukraine village is here. Little Italy is here. We need to start focusing on little black, black people. You, you, you could be foundational black Americans. You could be Caribbean black Americans. You could be uh, 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 whatever type of black American you want to be. But you need to be working together with your folks because everybody in this country works together with their folks. To quote the great Dr. Carl Anderson, everybody is living off two incomes but us. Their income and ours. I don't see nobody talking. You don't never see. I, I one of the reasons, the only reason I like that was that Instagram. It's because I look at the food on that. I don't never see Asian people cooking fried chicken. I don't never see nobody cooking soul food. It be us. So that means it's safe to say it ain't a whole lot of people from outside of our community coming shopping at our restaurants. But guess what? If I ask the people in the chat room uh, and the people who gonna listen, do it. Put it in the chat room. What's your favorite food? List your three favorite foods. It might be soul food, and it's going to be uh, Mexican, and it's going to be something else. That means everybody eating off you. I love pizza. I love taco. I love this. I I love pork chops and chicken. That's what I eat. I eat chicken, and I eat watermelon. Yep, I eat beans. I like like the lady. uh, Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. That's what I like. I like my food. I ain't saying I don't eat tacos. But like they say, man, ask your great grandma. When the last time you see your grandma eat taco? My grandma died when I was 22 years old. She never fed me one taco. My other grandma died when I was a young person. Not one taco. My grandma, Esther, my great grandma, Esther, died when I was 14, 14. Not one taco. So we need to be supporting each other, man. 
I ain't got no issue with nobody. But I'm just telling you, why everybody, oh man, uh, woe is me, man, we got to do the right thing. We are doing the right thing. Stop supporting your people. And and another thing, man, just to end this, man, white folks, again, I'm going to keep on y'all back because I'm y'all got my brothers and sisters back. Bozo, foolish, moronic behaving, talking this nonsense about two white people get killed. Well, what about Fred Hansen? What about Malcolm X? What about Martin King? What about the name Marcus Garvey who went, who got run out the country for no reason at all and they know it, his name still ain't been clear? What about that? What about that? What about Mark Clark? What about, uh, what about uh, 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 Asad Shakur? What about them? Hmm? What about them? What? Where's the vindication for those people in my community? We talk about two people. It's gonna be. I'm not even gonna say that. There was two people killed last week for no reason in the black community. I saw three different news reports in the last 14 days where cops kill black people. What about what about Michael Brown? What about Eric God selling loose cigarettes? He did now. What about a uh, uh, Breonna Taylor? One time shooting you. You got dead people. The cop got fired. <coughs> Excuse me. The cop got fired because he shot and then went to somebody else. Now, not for killing Miss Taylor. What about Sandra Blank? And we worried about these folks in California. No disrespect, because my man be great there. I mean, yeah, much love to the brother. My girl, low key, her sister there. You know, the twins. I love them. Got mad love. Bree, uh, BB, and that. And I got mad love to my people out in LA. I got family out there, friends out there, homeboys, homegirls, I got people out there. But I ain't got nobody living in Brentwood. I ain't nobody living in Brentwood. No. They live in South Central, they live in Watts. That's where they live. You know what I'm saying? It's just, ah, oh man, we're not going to be worried about these people. They're all like, get over it. Get over it. You need to quit. You need to stop. Orlando Castillo. What about that brother who got shot in the back and paralyzed the day after the George Floyd verdict? What about that? Why, why, why are we having a conversation about that? Enough of these conversations about these two dead people, who, these two people who got murdered by by somebody who was not on Thaw James Simpson. Now, and I'm like, I usually when I'm talking about people, I usually say something like, "Hey, but I usually say, oh, OJ, I ain't saying that no more." Either. Enough of this, man. Why do we care? I got folks depending on me that struggling because I ain't winning like I used to win. I got people, I got people who wishing that they had a better life. I got people who struggle. I got a young lady, what's her name? She reached out to me at this Dr. King. It's a Dr. King thing that I'm finna join. I want y'all to join too. I want y'all to what's her name? Uh can't think of her name, Lee. I'm in this podcast group. And this sister Lee, she reached out to me. Uh Kiara Lee, she gonna be on the show soon. I need y'all to get behind that. I need y'all to get behind this other organization that I'm gonna have on the program. I, uh, I'm start. I, uh, if y'all living in Chicago, 4104 West Roosevelt Road, a week Juneteenth weekend, I'm on the grill. We had an out food. That's a die. We had an out food. I need y'all to get in on that. I need y'all. I was gonna make this a private thing. I need y'all to do this, man. First weekend of June. See, they commandeered. Juneteenth. They made it a national holiday. Hey, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about that. What I want us to do is this. I've talked to some people. I wasn't going to promote it on my program because I'm like, I don't want them to come and dare that either. But guess what? It ain't like I got 10, 10 million subscribers. If y'all want to help me get there, please do. But I want y'all to create something I'm called Family Day. And it's just, you know, we, we, we all cousins, man. I want the first Saturday of June every year and plan for bad weather. Plan for, you know, I want y'all to get together the people that you're close to and sit around and bring pictures of your grandparents and your parents and your uncles, aunts, cousins, and let's talk about them and have some food, bring some food. And, and, and look, here's a suggestion. What, whatever your mother used to make or your father used to make or your grandmother used to make or somebody used to make, Everybody bring something that somebody that they love made and cool out with your family. Play some of that good music. See, I'm sick of seeing these posts on Facebook, seeing showing these young brothers with their pants hanging off their butt. This is disgraceful. You know what's disgraceful? Elders not talking to young people instead, instead, instead of talking at them. 
talk to them. But I want us to come together, get you 15, 20 friends, and, and, and people don't show up, they don't show up. Get you about 15, 20 friends. Everybody bring some, bring some music, sit down and cool out and talk to the good people in your life. I oh, mean, I don't like my cousin them. Well, don't invite them. You like somebody, if you only like your man or your woman, sit down there and just sit with them and talk to them about your mama, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, somebody who we are gonna slowly, systematically rebuild this black community to the greatness that we were on a trajectory to have. Enough of this finger pointing, finger wagging, and you should, and we don't, and black people, then we our worst enemy. That becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. Prophecy. We are not our own worst enemy. When you got the police riding down on people, killing them. Oh, remember what about black on black crime? What about it? That's called humanity. That's called humanity. Do I want black people to hurt black people? No. May I get shot tonight? Possibly. It's a possibility. It ain't a likelihood, but it's possible. When I walk out the crib, I might sit on the front and fire up this stove my man gave me the other day. It's possible, but it ain't likely. So let's A. P crime is proximity. You do not get your car stolen when you leave town. When you are in another neighborhood, you may you're not gonna get into an argument with strangers. You get an argument, you got more arguments with your cousins and your siblings. The people who get on your nerves and the people with access to you. It's always your family. You know why it's always your family? Because they around you. Because you don't let strangers around you. You don't get in arguments with strangers because you don't know them. You, you ignore them. But the people in your family, they get on your nerves because you get access to you. So I want us, every first Saturday of June, start off small. Get you about five, six people. Everybody bring a dish. Bring some pictures of your elders, ancestors, people who ain't there. Bring some pictures of your grandchildren. Show people who what is and speak that into existence. This is my grandson, he's gonna be a lawyer. This is my granddaughter, she's gonna be a doctor. This is my nephew, he gonna be this, he's gonna be a, a software engineer, he's gonna be an engineer. This this is my nephew who 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 on his way to being something. Let's stop talking about negativity. Let's not be so quick to condemn another black person for crimes committed against the world. Can kill Abel. In that book we call the great, the good book, the word of God, basic instructions before leaving earth, it's a bunch of people that kill people. Paul and Saul and all them people kill people and everybody in there did some wrong. Hey, hey they still, God still rock with them. So if, hey, if the principle, if you are spiritual, I don't believe in God, I'm just spiritual. If you're spiritual, that means you believe in karma. That means put out some positive energy. If you believe in Jesus like me, Jesus said, forgive people seven times, 77. Stop forgiving people. Look past the indiscretions because you know what? Like God said, you want somebody to forgive you? I'm going to need you to stop forgiving people. And hey, I'm king of the hypocrites because it's harder than Chinese arithmetic for me to get past me, past some when you cross me. So I'm working on it. I'm under construction. But what I am sick of is y'all condemning other black folks because ain't nobody on our team. And stop recruiting people for our team. If you down, you down. People like Candace Soul and Jason Whitlock, this is how we destroy them. We stop talking about it. The next time you see their face, do like I do, just keep scrolling. I wouldn't know if Jason Whitlock flipped the script and started saying, man, y'all need to tune in to build and destroy. Y'all need to tune in to rap with H-Rap. I never know. I never know. I don't like that creep Vlad. I do like my man, Mouth Hoffa. Vlad was on Mel Hopper. I ain't watching that. I'm not supporting people who don't support my community. We don't need no more people on the team. We out of jerseys. You either born with a jersey or you marry into a jersey. If you ain't down for my team, STBY sucks to be you. With that being said, it's time for me to get up out of here, man. Y'all know it's Tuesday, man. Y'all know what happened with me on Tuesday. It ain't happening tonight, but you know, you know what it is. Shout out to Willie D, Tariq Nasheed, Nori, Talia Kwali, Zoe Williams, uh, Sway Calloway, Roland Martin, Big Ups to Roland Martin, Al Shopkin, Heather B, Clay Payne, my personal favorite radio host in the history of the world, the Read Down Your Favorites, Salute, uh, Karen Hunter in the building, my main man, Dr. Greg Carr, 
need y'all to tune in regularly subscribe 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 y'all see it on the bottom of the screen the internet bench media on youtube y'all know where to get me mondays i'm on the forecast tuesday i'm here every once in a while i do hold my biz sports big up to uh angel reese she's chicago and she in the building uh and my personal favorite, I know I like doing this. Don't get me wrong. It's just my personal favorite. Rapper with Ace Rap. Be not coming on today. I got a revival Thursday. Wednesday, tomorrow, revival. Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, revival at my church. I'm very active in my church. We heavy in the community. Come on through 4104 West Roosevelt Road. That's how I did that. I paid for it. But, nah, see, see, I'm, I'm petty. Petty Murphy. But I need y'all to come through, support. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tune in, subscribe. Next week, rapping with H Rap uh, on the 25th. What? Who's the guest? I got a guest already set up for next week. Oh, I got this guy, Al Lewis. He's an historian for the near north side of Chicago where I'm from. I, I, I was born on the west side. I represent the new York, north side of Chicago. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. It's your man, H Rap B. This is uh, Internet Bench Media. And for all of those who didn't like my show, you already know. You better shut your white mouth. I'm not kidding you. And as usual, my man Big Mo gonna take us out. If y'all don't know, that's Big Mo rapping. We in the building, Pog Bench Media. We finna take over the universe. Two fingers, one word, and I'm. We lust for that cheese, we lose sleep, dreams of that clean, we killing our teams, they dying for this American dream, them government schemes, they turning us to hustlers and fiends, we hustling trees, them politicians smuggling green, chasing that cheese, got everybody stressed in the streets, bottom me for speaking freely, let it breathe. Evangelists preach the congregations out of their seats They writing them checks for tithes, now as people can't eat She stripping for change for school, now she giving them brains She used to that loot, she earning, now she giving them strength He new to this game, but hungry, so he cooking his cane He getting that paper, but then they gave him tools to the brain It's rules to this game, but hustlers never hustle for fame The spirit of greed is grimy, so we struggle to change They put us in chains to take away our African names But if we submissive and don't resist, then who do we blame? It's all a game, man, it's European stake and they claim that you a victim of the game plan You thinking they ain't You thinking they saints Remember all them niggas they hang Killed our women and our children All our leaders are slain They gave us Obama But that nigga was hoping for change But Zimmerman is killing niggas And he free Shit is crazy Babies having these babies And getting checked But keep the child from They pop the rip his heart out his chest Our rappers was leaders And now they in the booth And the dress Spitting bullshit And making more But giving us less They taking our sound And changing ours Dumbing it down They taking our jobs And homes And they shutting us out They taking our kids Because it ain't a man in the house They locking us down But soon they gonna be Wiping us out They told our women They was too independent To need a man they told our brother He was too insignificant To advance It's all a game man It's European stake And they claim And you a victim of the game plan You thinking they ain't You thinking they saints Remember all them niggas they hang Killed our women and our children All our leaders are slain It's all a game It's all a game Thank you.